Welcome to Black and Blue, the podcast that's just for you. We bring solutions to everyday problems. We are here to humanize the badge. By interviewing first responders and discussing their trainings, experiences, and publications. Black and Blue airs weekly at 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Tune in. Uh, Coming up on uh, four years as the uh, chief of police here. Um, I did uh, 27 and a half years in uh, Santa Monica, California. Uh, re- uh, leaving there as a uh, captain in charge of the uh, investigative uh, division. Uh, I've been fortunate enough uh, to work in a variety of uh, assignments as I uh, rose up, uh, you know, through the ranks. Mm-hmm. Uh, and have been fortunate to, to work for two uh, uh, great departments and, uh, you know, great communities. Thanks. What kind of uh, assignments did you have as you were coming up through um, your, your first As department? all municipal police officers, I uh, started, uh, started off in patrol. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, I'll say cut my teeth, did my time there. I had the opportunity to be a school resource officer, okay. um, working with the uh, you know the, the youth and in, in, uh, in the Santa Monica community. Um, I then uh, had the opportunity to work uh, uh, a bicycle patrol uh, okay. in Santa Monica. They have a, a place called Third Street Promenade, which is a uh, pedestrian entertainment uh, uh, type district. Uh, best job ever. Got to ride a bike, wear uh, shorts and tennis shoes, and then they paid me for it. Um, uh, from there, uh, promoted, became a supervisor, went back to patrol. Um, spent some time in uh, internal affairs okay. uh, and uh, promoted again, uh, became a lieutenant, um, and went to investigations, and I spent uh, more than half of my career uh, on the investigative side of the house. Uh, actually, I went to investigations as a sergeant. Uh, when I promoted uh, as a lieutenant, I got the opportunity to uh, go back uh, to investigations. Uh, and then at a point um, uh, in that particular department, they have a uh, XO spot. Uh, so for those that are familiar with military, uh, so I was the XO for the uh, deputy chief uh, for a couple of years. Uh, and I firmly believe that that is uh, what um, uh, really prepared me or kind of put me over the top for the role of chief, because in that organization, uh, the deputy chief ran the day to day operation. So I had the opportunity to see the back end of uh, police work. I knew the uh, technical functional side. Um, and to learn about, you know, contracts and interlocal agreements and then all those types of things, the back end of the house, uh, that was where I cu- uh, cut my teeth um, in that particular uh, arena. Uh, and then, like I said, I promoted the captain uh, and then was given the opportunity to come lead uh, the Redmond Police Department, uh, you know, four years ago. And the other part is just uh, having a uh, department that is uh, desirable for people to come to because they, they are supported. Uh, yeah. We have tremendous community support, That's and then nice. our demographics from a city perspective is not your, uh, I'll say your uh, typical white, black, Hispanic. Uh, mm-hmm. We have a lot of um, uh, Southeast Asian uh, population, a lot of uh, uh, Indian population, um, mm-hmm. and so our, our diversity uh, is would be different than others to truly reflect our community. And the, the challenge from a recruitment perspective there is uh, for some of these other uh, uh, cultures, uh, law enforcement is not a desired profession. And again, right. we are in the tech uh, area, uh, uh, both between, uh, like I said, the tech companies that exist, uh, but we also have a tremendous um, uh, space um, uh, industry here. So we have a lot of uh, very uh, highly technical, highly specialized employment, and those are are the jobs that some uh, you know some of our demogra- some of the cultures and demographics that we have here in Redmond they tend to gravitate towards and that is more valued in their culture so you're you're fighting against um, you know so, something that's uh, you know hardwired deeply embedded cultural and 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 money and those types of things yeah. uh, especially from the public sector uh, cannot uh, compete against that tell tell your story yourself uh, because other people will tell a version of your story. And then you're responding to that version as opposed to just getting out in front of it. And if you if you mess up, you mess up. Um, and then the other piece of that, as far as the transparency, uh, and I think it goes back to, uh, you know, having a voice. Right. Uh, we all know that this this profession uh, uh, has been responsible for some atrocities and professions and historically, uh, you know, has traumatized, uh, you know, communities and, and communities of color. Um, right. and yes, that that trauma, you know, uh, is real. But if we can't come to the table 
and have conversations. Yeah. How are we ever going to get beyond that? We, we have to create new experiences. Uh, we can't deny the past, but we can create a, a different and better future together, but we have to be willing to come sit down and have those hard conversations. Right. Um, my approach to it is this, and I, and I say this um, you know, to any, uh, anyone in my community that, that I'm engaged with, if you think there's someone that I should have audience with, let that be known, and I will make myself available. Granted, there's 24 hours a day on one person, but I, I rarely ever say no to an opportunity to engage and have a conversation with folks, mm -hmm. uh, because that's the only way we're going to, I, I won't say change the narrative, that's the only way we're gonna create a better experience moving forward uh, on both sides. Because I also need to hear what is occurring in my community. I, you know, I, I have no illusions that I as a chief know everything that's going on in my organization. Um, but I can't bury my head in my office and think, oh, just because I don't have complaints, just because I don't have lawsuits and all that type of thing, that everything's going smoothly. Right. That, that, that's, um, that, that's naive, right? Uh, yes. But if I get out and stay out in the community and I have conversations with folks and I sit down and talk to my staff about what's going on, that's going to keep me truly informed uh, as to what is really happening. And then for the community, uh, that that is where that transparency comes in, is that willingness to sit down. Uh, about a month ago, I, I, I sat down uh, to a meeting with a, a number of um, uh, service providers uh, that were not fond of, uh, of the police necessarily. And for an hour and 15 minutes, I, I, I listened. I, I did not say a single word. I, I listened. And when it finally came, you know, my turn, they even commented, wow, chief, you, you, you took a lot. Yes, yes, I did. And and my conversation with them was, okay, you guys identify as the leaders of these, um, you know, marginalized and, and oppressed groups, um, you know, and I won't say in your opinion, right? Because that, 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 that is their perception. So therefore, that, that that is their reality. Right. So I challenge them. I go, so what have you done or what are you willing to commit to do to bring those groups to the table? So we can engage in this dialogue and and have a better path forward. Mm -hmm. You know, all of a sudden there wasn't a whole lot a whole lot of conversation because there was not defensiveness, there was not anything. Because again, I also have to go back to, I also challenge folks is, what is our reality here in Redmond? Right? We see the things that are going on across the nation, and, and some of those things are are, are appalling for sure. Uh, you know, as a you know a law enforcement professional, it, it, some of these things are are, are disgusting. Yes. What's going on in our community? Because we can, you know, we can wring our hands and disgust about things happening across the country, uh -huh. but that's not happening here. So we have to deal with our narrative and not that we can't learn from those things and put the things and systems in place to ensure that we don't have similar occurrences or similar outcomes. Uh, don't demonize, you know, me and, and my department because of something that occurred, you know, um, you know, halfway across the country. Right.